Hey folks, I hope that the road noise isn't too bad in this one. It's fucking windy out. I, uh, yeah, it's pretty annoying. But it's been a few days. I don't know. I can't even actually remember the last time I did a vlog. Like it's got to be two weeks almost probably. But I thought I'd do one today. I, uh, First day back on shift on days, <clears throat> which is fine, it's cool. Uh, so we had a safety meeting this morning and, you know, stuff that you do when you work in the oil field, like bullshit with your managers and whatever, and the other co-workers at the plant. I, uh, I usually work alone. Like uh, most of the time, uh, there's nobody else around. Part of the day you have uh, a lead operator, but for much of the day, I'm on my own. So I have to take care of the work things. And uh, it's kind of nice sometimes to just bullshit with your coworkers, even though they all work different shifts. And you don't see them very much. I, uh... Yeah, I don't know. I've had a thing that's kind of been bugging me today. I wrote a blog post today about this idea of toughness and, uh... Like, what is the value for people in not letting people be you know, fragile or, or, uh, soft or whatever, whatever adjective you might use to call somebody who, uh, who doesn't have that exterior hardness, right? Lots of people are fragile in a variety of ways. Some people coat that with a, a layer of external hardness. Like, and I don't mean, I'm talking emotionally, obviously. <clears throat> Because that's where a lot of this stuff, like a lot of stuff happens that people don't really recognize is uh, we all are run on our emotions. There's nobody who isn't. And this idea that the world needs to be tough and that people can't be can't have safe spaces because if they do, then they won't be able to handle adversity when it comes at them. And for some reason, this is how we're supposed to think of training people. We're training them to face adversity. And I just don't think that that's accurate. I mean, partially, I think that we owe it to all of our fellow humans to be as sensitive to their needs and as we can be. Some people have different degrees of sensitivity that they are able to reach, largely because others haven't been sensitive to them in the past. <clears throat> and it perpetuates itself. But it makes me a little crazy to think that there's a segment of society, people, men, white men my age, maybe other people, maybe people of color as well, but definitely white dudes my age who think that the world is a gladiator stadium and we must train our children to fight in it. And if they are, if we deal with bullies in a way that says societally says, hey, we don't accept bullies and we don't accept you making people feel shitty <clears throat> that we're, we're making our children unable to fight in the gladiator ring. Like where is the fucking gladiator ring? Where's the fight? What's the adversity that these people are going to have to face as adults that they aren't going to have like maybe they won't have a support system. But there's a reason that people learn adverse, how to deal with adversity in their lives already. 
without the added level of bullying being a thing. Bullying isn't teaching you how to face adversity. It's teaching you how to hide in a shell and never let anybody see the real you. I don't know. Did I talk did I mention the <laughs> this idea of toughness comes from I ha- I used to have a Facebook friend also named Corey oddly enough. And uh, he he would say some pretty nasty things. And I just eventually I had to get rid of him as a Facebook friend. Like I can't just deal with that all the time forever, right? But he seemed to think that the only way one could learn how to do things, deal with issues, was by being beat up by dealing with shitty people all the time. And I don't, I don't know. That seems wrong. And in fact, I think that it's tied up in a a kind of weird, I don't know, if it's a lack of empathy or if people are just stuck being like, well, I had it rough, so therefore other people have to have it rough kind of mentality. I don't, I can't really wrap my head entirely around it. I mean, I had it rough, but I've, I've, and I, I've had shitty attitudes about this in the past. I'm sure I have. But this idea that if suddenly everyone is soft, everyone is fragile and can shatter at the slightest provocation, it doesn't, make me, it doesn't convince me that we should be hard on people or let bullies have free reign or try to influence people by introducing adversity into their lives. All it really does is make me think that these people who think this way are actually really fragile and just need somebody some, need to be able to be fragile without you know being judged by on it without I don't know I really don't know it's just it it kind of blows me away how being people can face their own adversities they can face bullies they can be abused, they can face uh, a, a myriad of troubles and trials and tribulations, and on the other ha- side of it, they come out saying, you know what, fuck those people after me. The people behind me, they all just have to deal with their shit. I'm not helping, I don't care for them. It'll make them stronger in the long run. Because stronger is somehow better than not being as strong. When that's, I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm off base here. I don't think I am though. I don't think that being strong means that you treat people who aren't as strong as you badly. I don't think that being strong is necessarily the way that all these men that I de- I know identify it as. I don't think that that's right. I think that generally what they're doing is mistaking just a hard shell for being for strength. As opposed to real strength, which I think is feeling emotions, being able to be broken and and shattered and put back together, being fragile, but also being able to piece yourself back together or 
with the support of your loved ones or your community, piecing yourself back together. I don't know. It, it strikes me as the same idea, the same mentality that says that people who commit suicide are, are bad people. That's the same mentality, isn't it? And I don't think they're bad people. I think they're victims of a variety of situations and illnesses. And I mean, you never know what caused a person to internally decide to do those things. And it, it strikes me as not just insensitive to ignore the context of one's life, but downright shitty. I mean, being insensitive is being shitty, right? I don't think it's coddling to care about how people feel. Beyond that, I got, I don't have much. I also have been thinking about welfare today and, uh, or social assistance. And this idea of the people who take advantage of the system and it just blows me away that how fervent people believe these myths. Like, to the, to the effect where they think that it's, like, almost half of the people who are on welfare, or more than half of the people on welfare, or social assistance, are just lazy bums who don't fucking, can't do anything, or could work, but just choose not to because they're too lazy, and, you know, being on welfare is such a sweet life when you get to do nothing because... If they pay your rent straight up and they, or they pay us a, a portion of your rent and they pay, give you an allowance for food, like fuck off. It's just another aspect of a lack of compassion is what it is. I mean, I, I think there could possibly be arguments made to change the system so that people don't need welfare. I mean, obviously, as an anarchist or as a, a, a brand of socialist, I think that everybody should have the control over their own production. But I also think everything should be fucking free and we should all have our basic needs met and nobody should be fucking with each other. Fuck toughness. makes me crazy and you know the guys I know are good guys They're just buying into some backwards thinking some harmful thinking it strikes me that this is what's meant by toxic masculinity a bunch of dudes who fucking don't care about people's feelings, so they just say whatever the fuck they want. Do whatever the fuck they want. Be damned who they hurt. Bullying's fine because, hell, I fucking survived. I know lots of people who didn't. Well, not lots, but some. I know people who didn't. Well, I, I guess I don't know them now, but I knew people who ultimately did not survive being bullied. The expectations of masculinity. Outdated. Backwards ideas about masculinity. And I guess the APA just came out with a an article on, on masculinity, and I haven't read it yet, but I've seen some of the hot takes, some from very thoughtful people who I agree with, 
and some takes from some, you know, your Christina Hoff Summers and your Peter Bogosian types or whoever the fuck. And Jordan Peterson. Fuck Jordan Peterson. And they they take this idea, like they proclaim that they want to help men, right? They want men to be able to be men and and exist as masculine people without uh, di- without masculinity being a diagnosis. And it's just so fucking disingenuous. Like, you don't give a shit about men's a- actual issues. If you did, you'd be on board with feminism. Feminism tells us that toxic masculinity hurts men and women. And non-binary people. I'm sorry I don't want to leave anybody out. Because everybody is valid and important. And that's another thing too, like this toughness, this toxic masculinity shit, it gets tied up in like strict gender roles. And I mean, I've been kind of against strict gender roles for a long time. I don't buy into a lot of that shit. And I haven't, like ever since my daughter, before my daughter was born, I was like, okay, well she doesn't have to, she can be who she wants, right? I want her to be a happy, healthy individual who chooses her own life. And I don't want society to be like, here's what femininity means and that's what you have to be. But do you know, you don't get to decide that shit. As a parent, you think you do. You think you have power. You think you have some level of control of the way your children view the world and the lens they get it through. And you don't. And I'm not saying that, like, and I'm very proud of my children. I think they're going to be amazing adults. I think they're learning the world in the right ways as much as, and I, I try to help that as much as I can. But I try to teach them too. I try to explain to them too, the generals, the way that I was raised with them, and the way that my father was raised with them aren't helpful. They're hurtful. They hurt people who don't fit into them. And not everybody does. Like, most people don't fit into the strict, rigid, I'm a man type masculinity. Everybody's got a fucking soft spot here or there. Or they've got this thing that they do that's considered that that has been considered metrosexual, right? Because they had to name men, they had to give it a name when men did things that weren't considered masculine. Fuck gender norms. Fuck them. I don't know. I work with some good people. I know a lot of good men. But often, their ideas are wrong. And they're resistant to change. And it can be frustrating. It isn't like a real struggle compared to the way some people in the world struggle. I don't want to compare it to real issues. But it is frustrating to be in an environment where men are behaving in ways that are hurtful to them and others. And when you try to bring that shit up, they don't want to hear it. They don't recognize it and they don't like it. I don't know. I think that's all I got for today. Have a good one.